Supercars rattling. There are a lot of attractions around the Gold Coast, but today supercars are the number one attraction at Surfers Paradise. And a great start by Will Davison, but he was closed off by Van Gisbergen, who had to creep it to the right to stop him from rocketing by, but he's still got pace on his side, but on the wrong side of the road for Davison. Contact, though, with Mostert. And he had to straight line, Davison. Now, how are they going to resolve this? I'm not sure how they're going to resolve that. They will run alongside each other, Van Gisbergen and, and Davison. They bumped in the braking area. And at the end of it, he's going to have to redress, I would think. But I actually don't know, because he was on the outside. He would have been on the inside for the right-hander. There's lots of chat on the radio about it immediately between Van Gisbergen and Co. And then Shane slowed up on the run to turn four. And then, oh, oh monstrous man. trouble here. Safety oh, car boards and fire. That safety is an extraordinary fire. incident. There are cars everywhere. Golding's right in the centre of it. Courtney's backwards. Hazelwood flag, Smith. Red flag, red flag. Red flag. Slade in the middle of it. There's got to be oh. 10 cars there, hasn't there? Lee Holdsworth, enormous damage on the front of the Penrite car. James Golding's car, terrible. Macaulay Jones. Brock Feeney. Are you OK? Are you OK? Make sure you're OK. So this is Macaulay Jones okay. and Pertamina backing on that car this weekend. New livery and trouble also for Todd Hazelwood up at Turn 11. Per Goodness cat? Meets. There's a fire going on there at the front of the Macaulay Jones entry. And this is extremely bad news for Brad Jones, who's already had a cost. Oh, and they need to get that out in a hurry. He's going to press the onboard fire extinguisher system is what they're doing. So Nick Perkett actually went back over to try to help with Macker and actually put the onboard system. Here we go. Now, James Golding has actually grabbed a fire extinguisher from the local officials. So is Brock Feeney. Well done. The level of cooperation there, sportsmanship between those competitors. Well done. Nick Perkett, James Golding, Brock Feeney, is that that's Macca there, isn't it, in the foreground? Macaulay Jones trying to put his car fire out. James Taylor is the race director for Motorsport Australia and on the right-hand side of our screen. Hack, what's going on here? Oh, oh. yes, yeah, horrible moment then for James Golding. And then all this lot have got nowhere to go. They have literally arrived in the middle of a gigantic accident. So it starts with James Golding tripping over right here, gets it crossed up, launches across the top of the kerb, lucky not to roll it, and that has had the effect of tripping over Randall, and then the rest of them are all doing 150 kilometres an hour, and they drive smack bang into the middle of a gigantic mess. Oh. And that's going to take some time to clean up. I think I can say with a reasonable degree of confidence that all drivers are OK and out. Man. So James let go of the wheel and crossed his arms there. So that was a shocker. This is the view from Thomas Randall's car. At least he gets to scoot out the other side. Green flag, green flag, green flag, green flag. And he's got straight on with it, Will Davison, and Shane's gone straight with him. So he had it in the right spot in the rev range to be able to just snap that throttle in first gear and stay right with him. In fact, if anything, the two leaders did a good job of opening up a pretty hefty margin already over Chaz Mostert. So decent gap there, and Van Gisberg has kept himself in touch. He's got good pace even through the run down here at the first chicane. And Will knows it, so he's covering already because that's been an area where Shane has been super strong all weekend. He's been able to pass cars comfortably down there. Yeah, well done, Will Davison. What that does immediately, it says, I know what your game is, Shane. I'm going to park it right there on the inside. And I know that that's where you put so many manoeuvres on through the course of the weekend so far. He even did the same there. He put it in the middle of the track going into 11. Now, he's had a bad run on the way out of there. Does he lunge down the inside? No, he doesn't. And he's giving him some hurry up there at the moment, so Shane's right on him. He's going to be strong down here. He'll have a dive. 
Will knows it and covers. And he's into the back of him and it's starting to just unsettle slightly. So he's trying to get up the inside. Davison stays out on the racing line. And there's a big push and shove going on here as they bring Anton in. Now he tries it from a different approach. He's trying to undercut him on the exit. Davison gets a good drive off there this time. So things might have settled down a little bit in terms of tyre grip now for Will Davison. That was pretty wild stuff for Van Gisbergen. And he's come off there nicely again. Jeez, he's getting off turn 10 well. And he fires there straight down there. He's caught Will Davison napping. Up to the back of Brody Kostecki, but then he's parked behind Brody. He's doing exactly the same lap time. So it doesn't actually show you what the potential of that car speed is. Mark Winterbottom right in behind, line of stern. Tim Edwards said earlier in the weekend that it was roughly $600,000 worth of damage this weekend with both those cars involved before Thomas Randall and James Courtney. Right, buddy, job. Go, go, go. That's to be applauded regardless of whether they get classified or not. So for all of the men and women at Tickford to roll their sleeves up, to get that car back together again and to send it back out there is a great credit to teamwork and hard work and how's James just bowling straight over everything that under normal circumstances you might... Oh, that's the reason why they're having a look at that car. So that was awkward between Jake Kostecki and David Reynolds. On board now with David, so you'll see this now. Have a listen. It's like he backed it off. So I think Kostecki come out of the throttle and David was hard in the throttle. And David didn't really have a choice for how he... Ended up making contact. It's very strange, wasn't it? Van Gisbergen. Van Gisbergen now onto the back of Chris Biffer. Now, I was talking before about having a lot of air around that car, but that, of course, doesn't take into account that people choose to stop at different times. So Chris has stopped, and where he's come out now, parks him just in front of Shane, so they're reacting. You can hear Andrew Edwards on the radio in the background, so they don't want to be interrupted. So. Uh, Water temp. Yeah, they, they were talking about that on the radio a few moments ago. Unusual way to open the bonnet with a with a Stanley knife. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good when it's heating water and coolant. Yeah, so definitely overheating on James Courtney's car. Come around to the front of the car, you can see when they've repaired it, there's not actually a radiator duct in there, so there's the radiator's down up there. And there's no actual radiator duct, so the team have done their CPS part of the pit stop, got the fuel done, and then if we look in the garage, they've got a radiator duct ready to go. So a bit more work to be done on James Courtney's car to get him going again, so they need to make sure they get this done in enough time to get him back out and get him classified. But, yeah, don't need to hurt an engine, given how much damage they've had at Tickford over the years. We don't need to hurt an engine as well. Will Brown's blocking on the way in there. And that's going to cause some issues as they all make nose to tail contact on the way out of four. This one's brewing. Yep. <laughs> Good explanation. Just a little, just a little, just a little, and he's right there. Have a look at the benefit he gets with the side draft, and he tries to sneak it up the inside, and Chaz just closes it down. That could have been a train wreck. That could have been a monster shot. Yes, yeah, um, just unusual. You know, we probably oversold it earlier in the weekend about the perhaps the physicality and the potential for, for risk and mistakes, but it just hasn't panned out that way. Uh, that's not a good scene, unfortunately, for Jack LeBrock and that car. Certainly not going anywhere in a hurry. The truck assist entry and he's vacated in a hurry, so a terminal problem for them. David Reynolds also being warned, and that's Alistair McVean on the radio in the background there. Oh, and a problem here for Thomas Randall. Why is he coasting? That's out of the final corner. And, uh, yeah, been told Could be a safety car. But otherwise, just try and stay out the way. We were going to go on board and talk to him a little while ago, but I don't want to talk to him now. We won't be able to see anything. What a day for James Courtney. So he's let the belts go so he can stick his head up. Yeah, well, look, he's craning his yeah. neck at the moment. So is the bonnet just done of its own accord? They're a composite panel. And uh, so you can see why it's so difficult for him to spot an apex at the moment, spot anything. I mean, someone's about to jump on it, aren't they? It's going to be a gym exercise here. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. 
If you do 100 of those every day, you'll be really fit. 22 laps break. that Van Gisbergen has done on those tyres. Moss has done 28 laps. And Davison's done 26 laps. Reynolds, 22 laps also. So there's not a lot of difference there. And no. uh, they're all cooling out and about to go one more time. So we are green flag racing on the Gold Coast to bring this one home. The second of the Boost Mobile Gold Coast 500 races, finding a way to wind that throttle in very gently to build it back up to 265 kilometres an hour on the front straight. Top gear. And then trying to determine where you get your foot off the brake pedal on the run in the turn one without locking the brake and carrying speed out the other side. 0.8 of a second is the gap now. Eight laps to run. Van Gisbergen over Mostert. The field is condensed after a safety car, so that on a pro rata basis as a penalty really shoves you back in the field. Yeah, it makes it a lot worse, doesn't it? You see on that totem two on the left-hand side, the Mark Winterbottom has made five spots. Brown up five, Heimgartner up 10, Pither up seven, Slade's done a good job, up 12. Down the inside now comes Brody. Contact! And gets it through. So Cam's not happy. And Brody moves it up into position five. Oh, and here we go. Frosty down the inside of Cam, who's getting assaulted left, right, and centre. And Pye is actually going to end up nudging the wall, and he does. That was awkward. He's already got a penalty hanging over him, and this is going to drop him to the back of the field. In Brady control to all teams. 15-second time penalty to car nine for a driving infringement. So Will Brown's also got 15 seconds added to his race time at the end of this one now as well. He's currently sitting in eighth. That's going to take him out of the top ten. The team has obviously always been very competitive and certainly the benchmark operation. But for this bloke, the superlatives, we've run out of superlatives because he is driving as well as we've seen anybody drive these cars ever. For the 21st time this championship season, Shane Van Gisbergen is at the top of the tree. Nice 2.1 seconds the margin in the end over Chaz Mostert. 1.3 seconds back to Will Davison. He gets it onto the podium. And that was another immaculate performance from Shane Van Gisbergen, who just continues to stitch up the points here. David Reynolds in fourth position today from Brody Kostecki and then Mark Winterbottom, Cam Waters. And still showing in eighth, but the penalty to be added for Will Brown, followed by Andre Heimgartner. Chris Pither will be pleased. That's a decent reward for him in the Coke entry, and it will certainly be a uh, best performance here for him uh, in car number 22. Actually, I'm going to correct myself because he was seventh here back in 2013, Chris Pither in a co-driver race. I think that's... Is that McLaughlin somewhere in the smoke there? Yeah. So uh, he's celebrating a fellow Kiwi's performance today and uh, enjoying motor racing life as a spectator and a fan. Scott McLaughlin, three-time supercar... Uh, three-time supercar champion and a Bathurst winner. And uh, great to have his company here. <laughs> He's in there somewhere. Stevie Johnson there with him too, I think. I'll look. The boys all having a couple of little adult beverages, enjoying the atmosphere. It's been a sensational weekend, and what a performance by this guy, Neil. Absolutely superb. So there's also a message come up on Race Management Channel here about a post-race investigation for the Anton Di Pasquale tyre pressures as we check out those results for you. Uh, now, some of those are not penalty corrected, those people that you saw in the top 10, and so this will change the order ever so slightly. But there is no doubt about the race winner or second or third. So um, great performance by Shane Van Gisbergen, home by two seconds, and he's murdering those Dunlop soft tyres or what's left of them. That is a burnout. It's going to have no inner guards. In fact, it hasn't got any. It's got no tyre carcass, and that's probably a bit of inner guard going with it there at the moment. So, and he, can, he cannot see. Oh, that'd be horrible. He won't be able to find the edge of the pit lane, will he? He's got the car in the lane, but he won't... No, oh, no, he's right now. He's got enough visibility to work it out. 